So if you've been here since the start, you'll know that I've moved away from staggered keyboards where the rows are all kind of slightly staggered, uh, which is a throwback from our old physical typewriter days where the hammers had to go underneath each other. So moved away from that towards a, a more modern keyboard layout, which is a columnar or ortholinear, um, slight difference between the two, but essentially no stagger between the rows. So that's all good. But there was one more throwback from the physical typewriter days, and that's the QWERTY keyboard layout. So obviously this has been widely adopted because of that. Um, but of course it was actually designed designed back in the day to stop the hammers jamming on the paper so you would be pushing keys that were deliberately far apart from each other to avoid the close hammers all colliding and, and jamming. So that keyboard layout is actually designed to stop you pressing keys that are near to each other and that's actually a really pleasant thing to do when you're typing you know when you when you push a key next to another key that that's a good thing it makes it easier you know you're kind of rolling you're, you're quite happy to roll your fingers like that. To avoid that in a keyboard layout is a real shame so I, I thought let's explore this and I know people do use alternative keyboard layouts but I kind of always put it off in my head because I know that it's going to really hurt basically uh, learning it um, but I, I jumped in you know I hate the idea of being stuck with something that doesn't have a purpose it, it comes from some other arbitrary reason from history and, and we're stuck using it just because we can't be bothered to learn something new I don't like the idea of that the, philosophically speaking I'd love to be able to move past that kind of position so for the sake of a little bit of learning something new I think it's definitely worth learning a keyboard layout that's actually designed for efficiency and comfort rather than something that's pretty much designed for the opposite and in complete completely different hardware. So in this video I'm just going to look sort of loosely at what's involved in changing layouts and why I changed uh, from QWERTY to Workman and then from Workman to Colmac DH. Um, uh, but stick around for the other videos where I go into much more detail on the problems I then found with Workman and the process it, uh, of sort of learning Colmac DH as well. So we're kind of making a massive commitment here to throw away this muscle memory we've learned for QWERTY and replace it with something better but you know you're not going to get the rewards from that until a long time in the future where you've rebuilt the new muscle memory. So the first alternative keyboard layout that I learned after QWERTY was Workman and I stumbled across the website and they make a very compelling case as to why Workman is better than Colmac and Dvorak which are the alternative kind of the other the more widely known alternative keyboard layouts. So I jumped in and I started learning this and immediately I was rewarded by this you know unbelievable kind of benefit of using the more frequent keys on the home row and you can really immediately see that because those are the keys you, you start learning first. Of course when you're drilling those keys you're not even worried about the outer keys anyway so it sort of immediately feels really amazing but obviously that's kind of partly because you're only using the few keys in the home row but you can really see how having those common letters on the home row is going to make a massive difference to the sort of efficiency of typing. So I decided to go the whole hog and learn this cold turkey. I didn't want to be using QWERTY at all because I knew it would kind of slow me down if I was thinking of two layouts in my head. You know, I didn't want to rely on using QWERTY. I wanted to just jump in and get this, get this in my muscle memory and start using it. So on this channel, I make films looking at design, usability and workflow and, and how those things can really help us improve efficiency and enjoyment in all areas of our life, not just computing. Um, so if you enjoyed that sort of content, please do hit the subscribe button and uh, stick around. So I coincided learning this with a holiday time basically and I think that's a really good approach. You know, if you've got a week off work, this is a good slot. Really drill this and then by the time you come back, you'll have it in your muscle memory. You won't be very fast, but you'll be able to type an email a bit slower, but you know, you, you don't have to look at the keyboard all the time. You'll be able to start doing it. And of course, as you start doing that, that you can then use that to make yourself improve in terms of speed as well. So I think that's kind of a, a good approach, but it's really important not to underestimate how much of an upheaval this is, you know, throwing out your old keyboard muscle memory and trying to and a new one. It's not to be underestimated, don't take it lightly. It does take a long time. So you can see on the keybr.com uh, sort of stats here that it's taken me 18 hours to get up to 100 words per minute on the workman layout. So my training sessions weren't actually all crammed at the start. I did obviously blitz it in that first week, but I then kept coming back to keybr.com to sort of drill things a little bit as I was using it day to day as well. So after learning the workman layout, I actually felt that it wasn't quite what I wanted from the new layout. I was got up to 100 words per minute and I was getting pretty fast. But my left ring finger started to feel pretty awkward at that sorts of speed. You know, there was a, a lot of movement. So I actually did a bit more research into this. And there are some faults with the Workman layout, which I'm going to do another video on because it's worth it looking at in a bit more detail. But all that actually led me to change to the Colmac DH layout instead. 
and this is the one I'm hoping to stick with this time. I'm not quite up to 100 words per minute on this yet. So in terms of timeframes, I switched to the Workman layout in June 2020, and then it was February 2021 by the time I changed to Colmac. So I'm hitting the high 80s words per minute on that now. So I'm definitely a long way off really feeling like this is totally coming from muscle memory. I know I'm drawing a lot on my muscle memory, but I'm still there's still that element where I'm consciously thinking about it, sort of almost babysitting the muscle memory to stop it making mistakes while I'm typing. Um, you know, it's improving rapidly, obviously, as, as the weeks go on. I'm really glad I've done it. 